I was younger, I used to fight a little bit. I used to fight. You know, I used to fight, and I used to make jokes about it um, because I used to tell people, um, if you think we're going to fight, we're probably not going to fight. See, I was a little bitty guy, you know, I was probably 100 pounds soaking wet, so I couldn't afford to, you know, run up on a big guy like Kent and start talking noise because he might hit me, and if he hit me, it might hurt me and knock me out. So I, I didn't want that, you know, so if you thought we were going to fight, I'm going to talk my way out of that fight. You know, I'm going to talk my way out of it. Now, if you didn't know we were going to fight, I'm probably going to get you at one while you're not looking. And y'all probably had some fights when you were growing up, you know, had some problems, especially if you got, you know, brothers and sisters, you know, you got altercations, you're going to fight a little bit, you know. And some of y'all might be sitting here, some of y'all might be listening, and I know what you're thinking. You're like, you know what? I've never had a fight in my life. I'm here to tell you something. You're wrong. You're in a fight every single day. There's not a time since you've been alive that you have not been in a fight. The problem is, you just might not have known it. Let's see what the Lord says about the fight. Unfortunately, the fight that we're in, these gloves, they're not going to help you. But let's see what the Word says in 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. For we walk in the flesh. Say we walk in the flesh. We know that. But we do not war after the flesh. This is an important word for today. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not the things that you can see. They're not these uh, boxing gloves. They're, they're, they're something different. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. We do not fight against flesh we cannot fight with the flesh that is not how we fight that will not work you cannot grab some uh so th these here or some boxing gloves and say we're gonna fight against the enemy i'm gonna take a demon and i'm gonna give him a left hand that's not he doesn't that's that don't work and and it's important for us to remember that because as we go through this world especially right now the things that we're going through right now, we have just seen our country pass some laws that, of course, as, as true Christians, we kind of have an issue with. And, and, and we want to lash out, rightfully so, and say, you know, this is wrong, this is not right. We have to remember that the way that we are going to fight is not with these. It is not with the things that we're going to do physically. That is not how we fight. See, that's not how we fight. See, there's a different fight that we're in. We're, we're not in this, this battle that is toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We're in a battle that, is, that, that is, is far above us. We're in a battle that is spiritual. Let's, let's look back at the Bible just for a moment and look at Ephesians 6 and 11 as we learn today how we fight this battle. In Ephesians 6 and 11, it says, But put on the whole armor of God. Say the whole armor. You don't want an Achilles heel out. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The first thing we got to do is put on the armor, the whole armor. Don't, don't leave the helmet off. Don't leave your breastplate open. You want to make sure to put on the whole armor of God or be covered in Christ. For we wrestle not. Say we wrestle not. We wrestle this not. is so important. We I want you to get that down in your spirit for a moment. We wrestle not against flesh and and blood. I'm, I'm going to pause right there just for a moment because a lot of team, times we think that that's what we wrestle with. I've got a problem with this person. This person made me mad. My boss said something that made me mad. My, my children are doing this. Or somebody has cut me off or, or this judge has said this or this politician has said this and we want to go after that person. You ever been cut off on the freeway real good? Real good. Well, you really want to say some stuff? You really want to utilize some fingers that you probably shouldn't be using. Hey, man, I'm not talking about number one. I'm talking about a different kind of number one. You ever, is it just me? Is it just me? I've been there. And, and you want to do some things. You know, I, I've, I've gotten some interesting things happen to me before. I've actually had people say, you know what? Uh, we want to kill you. Death threats. That don't make you feel good. You know what it makes you feel like doing. Tell them, come on. 
Go ahead and give it a shot. And, and the thing is, we, we want to battle that thing. And when we battle that thing, we want to say, you know what? Um, I, 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 I can get this person back. Uh, they, they've done something to me, and I want to physically get them back. They, maybe they've jumped on you, or maybe they said some things about you, and, and you want to get them back. You want to retaliate on them. You want to say, you know what? You did me this way. I want to do you this way. That's what we want to do. But the Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That's not even our battle. That's not even our fight. That's not even, I, I don't even get involved in stuff like that. It, it's, it's pointless. Somebody's just being used. Why? The Bible says we battle against principalities. Say principalities. Principality. Against powers and against, say, rulers of darkness. It's important that we get that term down, rulers of darkness, not those that just operate in the dark. We're talking about those that rule the dark. So we, we, we want to look at the enemy sometimes, some little kid, or I know we, and the, just the other day we did, a, um, we did a commercial for Doritos, and, and at the end of the Doritos commercial, we had this little stuffed devil that was looking at it and turned his head and started laughing at you, right? Sometimes we think that's all the devil is, this little stuffed animal that's going to be just laughing at you in the corner. We said rulers of darkness. Second in command, don't underestimate the enemy, rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in what kind of places? See high, say high places. We, we get that mixed up, high places. So we, we want to sit here and battle on the low. The, the battle is up here. And, and, and the Bible says, wherefore, take unto you, here we go again, the whole armor that you may be able to withstand this, uh, the evil this day and having done all to stand. Understand that our battle, our fight is not with your brother. Our battle and our fight is not with your sister. It's not with your boss. It's not with your spouse. It's not with your children. That's not where our battle is. I can't tell you how many times we have brought uh, people in for counseling for uh, for counseling for the, the husband and the wife, and they battle each other. Like, who, who can win that? Who win? The, 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 is the husband win? I won. What, what, what's the prize for winning that battle? Does the, the wife win? What, what is, what is the, 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 the purse? What do, you, what do you get for that? Y'all on the same team. Either you win together or you lose Together, it's like being playing basketball or football. You don't have half the team win the Super Bowl and the other half of the team lost the Super Bowl. We all win or we all lose. Your battle is not with this individual. That's not your battle. You know, right now across this country, we're, we're looking at uh, uh, some laws that have been passed. And I, I want to pause for a second, and I want to go back to the earlier time. See, back in the day, when you sat in school and, and the teacher got in front of you, she began to say something. She said, it's prayer time. And in prayer time, they went through the 23rd Psalm. And, you, and all the children were there, and, and they prayed together. And then a lady came and, and, and she was able to get a law passed and said, we can no longer do that. And we as Christians, we say, you know what? They took prayer out of school. First of all, there is no they. Second of all, they can't stop you from praying. They didn't, no one took prayer out of schools. We took prayer out of our children. And when we understand that the enemy is trying his best just to distract as much as he can, to keep the battle carnal as, as long as he can, allowing uh, laws to be passed to say, you know what, now people who are gay can get married. And, and, and we fight against that and we're, we're, we're upset with that and rightfully so. But understand that while we're doing that, the enemy is after our men. Understand that. If you look around the world, you'll see that most tragedies that happen are happening because of an out-of-control male. A male was not in control and caused a catastrophe. We, we've just seen where an out-of-control male went into a church and started shooting up the church. Out-of-control male. Understand that the enemy is after our male. You see, they didn't say, uh, now it's legal for lesbian marriages even though that's the case. They specifically said gay marriages, thinking of the man. Look at who they publicize. 
The male's getting married. Why? Because the enemy is after our male. So while we're uh, a study just coming down on this, this thing, understand that just because a law has been passed, remember what the Bible has said. The law is for the lawless. See, I don't need a law that says I shouldn't be killing people. I don't, I don't need that law because I'm not going around killing people. I don't care if the law says it's okay for gay folks to get married or not. I'm not gay. It doesn't really affect me. So what we need to do is put the law aside and make sure that Christ's law is being preached all over the nation. If his law is being preached out of the, all over the nation and people are truly repenting of their sins, you don't have to worry about that. There's a lot of stuff that's not against, it's not against the law to play off on your wife. But it's against God's law. We need to make sure that we stay with God's law. The more people we get to fall in love with Christ, the more people we bring to this word, you don't have to worry about some stuff. It just goes away. So what we need to do is actually utilize this to bring more people unto Christ. Amen. First Thessalonians five and eight says, but let us say us, us, us. See, ain't no they. It's just us. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith, say faith. And here's this word and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation for God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Get these folks saved. Get them saved. You, you want true change? Get folks saved. See, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to be um, out there with the sign that says, don't let people get married. I'll be out there saying, Hey, so um, in 100 years, you, you, you won't be here. Where do you plan on being? Mm -hmm. I talked to a gentleman this morning who, who is, um, he will tell you he's not on the fence, but I can tell he's on the fence. I tell you, I've never met an atheist. I've just met a whole lot of anti-Christians. I love a whole lot of people who have been hurting in, in church because a lot of people just say bad things about Christianity. They don't say anything about Hinduism. They don't say anything about the Baha'i faith. They don't say anything about Buddhism or Confucius. They don't say anything. They don't talk bad about Christ. There's got to be a reason for that. They've been hurt. They've been hurt by church people. But when you say, hey, look, um, let's, let's take a look at this thing. Let, let's take it out of the now and now. You've been hurting now and now. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, but at some point, you're going to die. We realize that um, there's only two options. Either you're right or you're wrong. If you're right, you won't know it. If you're wrong... You will. Are you willing to roll the dice? Let me know. Get folks saved. Love is the only thing that's going to help, help people. Love, that's why this church is called the Love Church. Love is the only thing. The, the Bible says we're not called to, to fighting with people and, and throwing left and, and right punches and jabs and all that. We're not called for that. What are we called for? We're called to be able to show love, to show faith, to have a helmet of salvation. That's what we're called for is to reach these people. I, I'm not trying to hate on them. They're just being used. The enemy will use whoever he can. He's used me. Amen. Amen. He'll use whoever he can. So I'm not mad at you because you're getting used. I'm going to pray for you because you're being used. You think it's an accident that, that, that one of the top uh, athletes in the history of our world is on TV turning into a woman? You think that's an accident? The enemy is after our men. They interviewed me and, and, and they, they said, what would you say to this man um, if he was sitting right here? I said, I would ask him, um, how long have you been hurting? What happened? Because that demon you've been living with for probably 30 or 40 years, it got there some kind of way. And what are you afraid of? It has nothing to do with, with all the stuff everybody else is seeing on the outside. See, the thing is that that's just, that's just superficial because at the end of the day, when you sit there by yourself in the mirror, it's, it's still you. You're going to be left with the same issues. You're going to be left with the same insecurities. You're going to be left with the same demons as you had before you got a nose job. It's going to be there. And the only thing that's going to come with that and, and be able to soothe that is love. That's it. The Bible said God is love. Amen? Amen. So, so what do we do about it? What do you do about it? Amen. Amen. Say that again. Amen. See, the, the first thing, we have to know that we're even in a fight. 
you know, um, unfortunately, we're, we're seeing people now that ju- they're, they're filming stuff, and it's horrible, these kids fighting each other, and, and, and some of the worst fights is when you see the, uh, just a kid sitting there or, or just standing there looking the other way, and all of a sudden somebody just come and grab them, grab them by the hair or something, and just start beating on them. Why did, are, are they able to get beat like that? Because they had no idea they were even in a fight. If they knew it was going to be a fight, they would have prepared for that. But they didn't even know. And so they get grabbed by the hair and slung all across and kicked and punched and the whole lot. I, I promise you, when people know that there's going to be a fight, even when they think it's a fight that they can't win, they prepare differently. A young man, uh, just yesterday I was talking to him, he said, I remember um, getting sent home from school one day in the second grade. He said, I was in the second grade and I had a bully kept bullying me. He said, I got tired of bullying me. He said, I knew he was going to bully me that day. He said, so he showed up, you know, with a little knife one time. So that bully came up on him. He, pulled, he said he had that knife ready. He said, all of a sudden that bully bagged up. Hey, 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 man, everything's going to be cool. Why did he bring the knife? Because he knew he was going to be in a fight. And since he knew he was going to be in a fight, he prepared beforehand. You're not going to get me today, bully. You're, you're not going to win this today, bully. And just like that little kid was in a fight every single day, we're in a fight every day. But half the time, we don't know it. And, and, and understand this, that uh, I, I've seen videos where the person is having an altercation with one person, there, and they're talking back and forth and back and forth. And out of nowhere, somebody they're not looking at, come and smack them on the side of the head and knock them smooth out. They thought their fight was with this person. It was really with this one over here. See, a lot of times we, we think our fight is with our brother or our spouse or, or whoever. That's not what our fight is. The, the Bible said that, that our, our, our fights, our, our, our struggles, they're not with flesh and blood. Quit doing that. Cut that out. It, you, you're wasting time, you know. I, I don't waste time hating on people, when, even when they say, you know, they're atheistic or whatever. I, I, uh, no, man, I'm, I'm going to love on you. I'm going to love your toes off, man. You, you, you're not going to be able to understand what's going on. Why? Because that's what the Bible says that we should do. That's not, you're not, come on, man, people change. The enemy don't change. God don't change. Those two things don't change. People change. You, either they're getting close to the enemy and they do the things that the enemy said, or they get closer to God and do the things that God said. But they are not the problem. This dude over here is the problem. Fight him. Take his kids away from him. Amen? Uh, uh, um, the Bible says that we should pray. That's one of our weapons that we should utilize. We should pray. Say pray. Yeah. See, prayer is so strong. Our kids got it right. How many of y'all got kids? I got kids. You got kids. You got grandkids. They got it right. They know how to ask for what they want. And if you don't answer to them, that's a yes. If you say no to them, that's it's going to be a yes. If you say don't ask me no more to them, that's wait a little while longer. Ask again till I get this yes. Some kind of way when we grow up, we lose that. Now, if your kids know how to ask you, Daddy, I want to go to Disneyland. Mama, can you take me to the park? Grandmama, can you take me to get some ice cream? If they know how to ask you because they feel as though you can provide it, why don't we talk to God more often? If somebody's bothering you, pray for them. Lord, bless that person. Because they wouldn't be bothering me if they had a great life. Can you do that? Bless them. Take care of them. Give them the desires of their heart. Open their eyes and help me have some more tolerance to not kill this person when they come around me. Because right now I might want to choke them. I might want to slit their throat. Lord, help me not slit their throat. Help me to show them some love. Help me. Can we do that? I want to make sure that as we go through this life, we're not trying to look at people and say, you know what? Um, this person I need to cast away. This person needs to do this. That's a, uh-uh. Pray for those people. They need it. All of those people who were lined up in line to say, I can't wait to go and I want to put a check mark on this sin and show everybody. That's a problem with that. Whenever we start celebrating sin, there's a problem with it. You know, people will say all over the land, well, everybody sins. You are absolutely right. Absolutely right. When you start celebrating it, you got a problem. If if I'm talking to a man and he says, you know what, um, Pastor Washington, I... I, uh, I was unfaithful to my wife. I, I, you know, I, I shouldn't have did it. You know, I, I fell. I, 
you know, I'm repenting, I'm, I'm sorry, I, sh you know, I, I probably will lose her because of this, but I really, whew, I, I'm, you know, I just, I didn't want to do it, I, I, but I did it, and at some point I wanted to do it, but I, I <laughs> now I'm repenting, and I'm sorry, and I don't want to do it again, what can I do to repair this, and, and I don't want to make God mad at me, and all of these things, that's, that's one thing, that's one thing. When someone says, yeah, I played off with my wife, um, I think it's a great thing. Let, let's do a TV show about playing off on you. Let me go teach some other people exactly how to play off on your wife. Because, you know, that's the right thing that you should do. You know, you shouldn't be stuck with one woman. You should have ten. I'm going to have a whole training course. We're going to go teach sixth graders how to have your main girl and have six others. Okay, those are two different things. One has no repentant heart. We know that God will bless the repentant heart. We can see that uh, in, in, in uh, David. David got with Bathsheba. He wasn't supposed to. He repented and the whole nine. And if you look at that lineage, if you look at the, the baby and the son and the son and the son and the son, they go all the way down to Jesus. Why? Because he repented. But when people are unrepentant and try to call their wrong right, well, you're living out the Bible. The Bible says that time will come. Those things that are right will be called wrong and those things that are wrong will be called right. And for those that are listening and say, well, that's not in the Bible. Uh, I, I actually heard of a guy. He was a, a homosexual bishop being ordained openly gay and he said that didn't bother me so much as what he said he said the bible does not mention anything about homosexuality i my head just exploded how did you get to be a bishop and you hadn't read the bible and then they'll say well it's only in the old testament i never understood that because that's still in the bible but read romans 1 just when you get a moment just go to romans 1 and Read that whole thing. If you want to know what God says about him. And for those that say, well, well preacher, I've got a problem with that, and i got a problem with you. It's not me you have a problem with. It's the Lord God who wrote this Bible you have a problem with. So take that up with him. Don't write me any letters. Just take it up with God because he wrote the book. I didn't. I'm just telling you what it says. Amen? But we need to make sure that we have love in those situations, and we're not celebrating our sin. You can't get better celebrating your sin. You can't get better. If you don't know that you're in a fight, if you don't know that there's a stronghold on your life, if you don't know it, you know, even alcoholics, when they get into class, the little AA class, you know the first thing they say? Hi, my name is Dwayne, and I am an alcoholic. You know what they're saying? I'm in a fight. And, and they say every day they're in a fight. Now, I've never had a sip of alcohol. I don't even know what it tastes like. So all I can do is tell you what these people have told me. They said, you know what? Every day. They want to make sure to, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brand new fight every day. Some of them say that the fight gets easier over time. Some of them say sometimes it doesn't. They've been sober for 20 years and they're still in a fight every day. But it's when you don't think that you're in a fight that's a problem. See, when you know you're in a fight, you're not going down to the bar Oh, I can handle this. It's no problem. I mean, you're an alcoholic for 35 years. You've been sober for 20 days. Oh, I can go into the bar. It's no problem. Drink up a little bit. It's all good, you know. I can be next to it, and it's okay. So you don't know you're in a fight. you like the little girl that's just sitting there and got a head drawn out of nowhere looking the other way. Why? Because you didn't know a fight was getting ready to transpire as, as a body. As a body of Christ, we, we've got to come together and help each other prepare for this fight. I want you to write a few things down um, so you can make sure that you are prepared for this fight. The very first thing we want to do is make sure we're focused on the right things. Focused on the right things. You know, when you look at Muhammad Ali, we can say Muhammad Ali was the greatest fighter of all time. Amen. Great <laughs> fighter. Great fighter. There's something interesting about his preparation, though. You know, as I prepared for this message, I looked at a lot of different great fighters, and I wanted to look at how they prepared and what they did in the gym and how many hours they spent with this. And, and when you look at all of them together, Muhammad Ali sticks out. But he sticks out for a totally different reason. Some people will say he was the worst preparer ever because there's some things he just didn't do. He, whenever he sparred, you know how people will spar for hours and hours, and, and they'll put their best in. Muhammad Ali really wasn't interested in that. When he sparred, he, he'd probably spar just a little bit, and he might go, go for it for a good 10 or 15 seconds, and then that was pretty much it. He was just kind of going through the motions for the rest of the time. 
But the things he focused on, if you look at his feet were so fast, that's because he jump rope probably more than anybody else. He did it every single day for hours, hours. He wanted to make sure his footwork was right. There, there's some other things he worked on to, to make sure his speed was where it needed to be. And it wasn't the same thing every other box he worked on. He focused on the things that he needed to focus on, made him the best in the world. We've got to make sure as Christians we're focusing on the right thing. I'm not concerned with people passing the law. These people are not of God anyway. They already told you we're not of God. So the fact that they would pass a law going against God's word, that doesn't surprise me. Matter of fact, I don't even have to talk to them. I can look and see what the word said. The word says that's going to happen. I, matter of fact, that should make people run to Christ. Because anytime you have a book that's telling you what's going to happen, and then it happens, you might want to pay attention to that book, regardless of what that book is. You know, people ask me, how do you know the Bible is true? I said, just look around. That's all you got to do, look around. And when, whenever somebody has something that's coming that, that, that is no longer the truth, whenever the truth shows up and you got so many lies, the truth will stick out. So go ahead with it. It doesn't make me a difference. That's not, that's not what I'm focused on. I'm focused on making sure people get into heaven. That's it. And making sure they live a, a, a Christ-centered life while they're here. If you want to ask me, Pastor Washington, why you're here, that's it. We want to get people to heaven, and that's easy. Take seconds. And you want to make sure that while you're here, you live a Christ-centered life. You are a disciple. Period. That's it. That is it. That's why we spend time training leadership. That's why we spend time down there making sure people have, uh, in, the, in the shelters, making sure people have what they need. Why? Because I don't want you to have hell on earth. God has provided a wonderful life for us. And, and, and as you go through this life, we want to show you how you can live a Christ-centered life. That You don't have to go through a bunch of mess. You don't have to go through a bunch of problems. The, the enemy has deceived people so much that they, they, were, they would rather believe a lie that hurts them than to believe the truth. You know, um, you, I remember speaking one time to some young girls. And I had to speak behind Planned Parenthood. And Planned Parenthood got up and they said, okay, what's the best way to not get pregnant? She's talking to eight, nine, ten-year-old girls. A little girl raised her hand, and I was so proud of her. She raised her hand. She said, well, just don't do nothing. You don't have to worry about that. It's the way you get married. I said, oh, look at that. Good deal. These girls have been taught. This woman here said, yeah, 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 that's not really realistic. So what, what do you really got to do? And so she started talking about condoms and venereal diseases and showing them pictures and this and that. And, and I'm sitting here like, is that easier? So, so to, to be with a bunch of different people and have soul ties and then you get married and then at, on your wedding day you look out and five of your ex-boyfriends are out there and they all look at it like, I don't know what you're going to do. I'll, is that, is that, you got the diseases that you got to tell people about and then you got to take pills and, and shots and all of this and then you got to register here and, and do it. Got to get it. That's, that's, that's easier? That's easier. You, you get with your husband, but you didn't got with 15 other dudes, so you're comparing them and all this kind of stuff. And then next thing you know, you walking down the street and you see 10 dudes that you used to, come on, now, that's easier for you? That's telling your husband, hey, did she do this? And you hadn't done that yet. Is that easier? Is that, that's an easier life for you? That's easier. AIDS can be solved in one generation with no money spent. Everybody just wait till they get married. Real easy. Simple. So, yeah, man, yeah. Man, marry a woman. You know, that's wrong. It's really, it's, it's as simple. But see, there's no money in that. So the enemy will make you think. Remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. There's a lot of money in us. stuff. I got behind him. I said, sweetie, you are absolutely right. That if you just wait, you'll be okay. You'll be fine. You'll be better off. Make your first kiss, your wedding kiss. It'll be wonderful. You'll live an off-the-hook life, and you will avoid a lot of issues. So having a, uh, six baby daddies, uh, with seven kids, that's easier for you? That's easier. Trying to coordinate which one is going on which weekend and all of this and, and dealing with all of their new girlfriends and, and new wives, and that's, e that's easier. That's better. So that's the way you want to go because this Bible thing, no, like just find a woman and marry her and have kids with her, that's just, that's, that's too difficult. Really? You know, I, I'm dealing now, I'm starting, I don't know, I guess I'm just looking, uh, getting older. I'm looking at generational curses. 
I've been dealing with about five people lately that the issue came five generations ago. Somebody made a decision five generations ago and cursed an entire leg of their family. Five generations. 1800s made a decision that is still devastating these people to this day. And the cold part is none of them even realize it. We just went all the way back in the family history. It's about your mama and your mama's mama and your daddy and daddy's daddy. And daddy. Mm-hmm. That's where it came from. We have to get in a mode to we're focusing on the things that we should be focusing on. You want to start including God. Say including God. Including in God. all your decisions. You know, I, I, you know, we do panels. You know, we do the pastor panel, right? And we get questions. One question we got one day, y'all didn't hear this one. Somebody said, you know what, um, I'm, I'm with this woman. Uh, I, I do not include God in my relationships because I feel I'm going to do wrong and I don't want to drag him into it. I don't even know how to begin to. There's so many things wrong with that statement. Include God in everything you do, because let me tell you something. You've already included him in whatever you do. If you in the motel, he's with you. It's not like he's like, oh, I, I can't see past the door. I've got to stay here. I'm, I'm sheltered from that. He sees all. He's already there. So you might as well have him on your mind before you make the decision. If you say the things that I say and the things that I do are going to be Christ-centered, and when I mess up, I'm going to repent like the Bible says. Period. Put him first. Lift him up. You'll be surprised. The desires of your, when you delight yourself in the Lord, oh, man, the desires of your heart are coming. Put God in your decisions. You know, we, we used to have the braces. What would Jesus do? I like those, actually. I know a lot of people thought they were like hokey and dumb. And, but you know what? I liked it. What, did you, what would Jesus do? What would he do? In this situation, what, what, what would he do? You know, people say, well, 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 Pastor, if you had some gay folks in the church, what would you do? Well, we've got gay po- folks part of our church, believe it or not. You know what we do? We love on them. Am I going to, is that putting a check mark on what they do? No. I tell people all the time, you know, we, you know, we actually do have a church full of sinners. I want you to know that. It's, we all screw up. Everybody screw up. Some of it you can see, some of it you can't. Some people are jealous. You can't see that. Yep, you too, kid. You ain't in there too. Right? Not me lying. See, that's your issue. No. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, we all fall short. So I'm not finna say one is better than the other, but I'm not finna check it either. I'm not finna tell Slim, hey, man, it's okay, man. You know, you got 15 other kids. You know, go on and get 16. That's a good even number by this other woman. Don't worry about your wife. She'll be okay. You got five with her already, man. So, you know, spread it around a little bit, Doc. Spread it around. I'm not finna say that. I know his wife. Yeah, your wife is like, I know his wife, too. She's not standing for that, you know. Well, you know, no. So the thing is that we have to learn to put God First in our decisions. If we do that, we don't have to worry about the fight. God will start fighting our battles for us. Some fights we ain't got, we didn't even know, was that a battle? Because God just took care of that immediately. I, I was ready for the battle. I had my knife. I was ready. I was all geared up. And the next thing I know, it wasn't an issue. Why? Because God fought the battle. You, had a, you ever go somewhere and you expect the battle, you expect the fight, like you calling somebody to get your money back for somewhere and, and hold on. And, and when you called and they just said, oh, no problem. We'll just give that to you. God fought that battle for you before you got there. Amen. Keep God in your decisions. Making sure that you continue in your giving. And that's giving everything. This is the love church. So, you know, we talk about giving love, giving money, giving time, giving a word. Be a giving person. Right? Don't be so tight. But be a giving person. If you want to win the fight, be a giving person. Amen. Y'all are good givers anyway. Some, there might be somebody listening online and don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all need to go. Y'all need to show up to the Love Church. Y'all will see some phenomenal giving people. Have, you know, something that David um, had is, is what we should aspire to be. God said something about David that we should really, we should really want to follow. God said, here's a man after my own heart. 
Here's a man who, who wants to see things like I see them. Now, I want you to know that that's a trip. I mean, if we're talking about seeing people the way God, God sees differently. Very, very. So have the heart of God. Seek after his heart to really love on people, to, to, to look at an adulterer and say, you know what, we're not really going to accuse you, and, and I'm going to recluse all of your acu- uh, uh, um, accusers. We're going to make sure that none of them are even fit to say anything about you. We're going to do that. Not that what you're doing is right. We're going to make sure that you realize that that's still sin. We're not going to kill you for it. Now, now we say we can do that. But if a child molester, if I, if I said we, we're starting a child molester ministry, that we're going to minister to all recovering child molesters, and we said, and I, and I said, okay, the front row is going to be full of child molesters. Y'all going to be like, okay, my child will be in youth ministry today. Do they have children? Do they have children? That's all I don't even know. If they got kids, because something might be wrong with the kids. So we need to think about that, right? Still love on these people. Amen. Like, they're being used. Well, one of the things that I get asked probably more than anything else is by, by people who really want to be Christian, you know, they really want to get their life together is how do I get that relationship with Christ? How do I really get to know him? How do I have that heart? You know, we, we're talking about fighting and he'll fight your battles and, and all that and, 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 and put him first and, and focus on it. But how, how, how do I do that? And they'll look at other Christians and their faith and, and all of these things and, and even their giving and their heart of God. And, and they're like, I, I, I want that. I remember thinking, I'm like, man, I want that. That's what I want. You know, we'd be in a church and there's a lot of people jumping up, hollering and running around the church and everything. And I didn't, I didn't care about any of that. I didn't care about none of that. But then I would see people that, that had the heart of God. You know, they really, they really loved people. You know, they didn't need to run around. They just loved on people. When, when folks needed something, they would, they would just get it to them. I remember uh, being kicked out of a church because I didn't dress right. You know? And I remember being in another church. They wanted me to come play, and I showed up. And, and I guess I still w- I wasn't dressed appropriately for their deal. They didn't say nothing. They just put a robe on me and said, come on out here, man. We want you bad. You'll be just like the choir. And I came out in front of 10,000 people, played my little horn, played my little flute. They said, we're going to cover you. They didn't even say nothing about it. It didn't even dawn on me until later. That's what they were doing. They were just saying, we want to love you, man. It doesn't matter how you came. We don't care about all of that, man. We, just, we want you. 